by the way, uh, I'm going to reveal something here. Uh, I knew your mom, Rosie. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her in many years. Uh, but uh, she was, this lady, Rosie, was uh, an <laughs> activist, let's say. She was a hellraiser <laughs> when she was young. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what she was. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm not surprised that uh, you entered into uh, public service. But what led you? What led you to public service? I grew up with a, a mother who was very active in the old Chicano movement of the late 60s and early 70s. And my mother ran for city council when she was 23 uh, in San Antonio. She didn't win. They didn't have single member districts at that time in San Antonio. Uh, and in fact, y'all just honored, I think, Senator Leahy with the Henry B. Gonzalez Award. Henry B. had been one of the very few uh, Mexican-Americans who actually was able to get on the city council in the early 50s. Uh, but Joaquin and I, my twin brother Joaquin and I, grew up in a household where democratic participation was something that was looked positively upon, not cynically or that it just doesn't make a difference. Um, I didn't particularly like politics or public service when I was growing up, though, because usually the way that we interacted with it was that we would get dragged to like rallies or speeches or, you know, stuff that was very boring for the average, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old. What interested me in getting into public service was when I got away from my hometown of San Antonio. And I, when I went to Stanford, Joaquin and I went to Stanford, it was the first time that I got to see that community from an outsider's perspective. And in comparing it to the Bay Area of California, I could see you know, some of the good things in it, like that it was very family oriented and uh, a place where people of different backgrounds generally had gotten along well, multicultural. Um, but I could also see in the Bay Area a place that had higher income levels, better education levels, was more entrepreneurial. And my interest in getting back, getting into public service, going back home was how could you create the best of those two worlds? so that you have a community that is well-educated, has good incomes, is entrepreneurial and ready for the future, but also, I, I've said this many times about my community, you know, it's still the kind of place where if two people pass each other downtown on the street, they still look each other in the eye. Or if somebody sneezes in a restaurant, you know, two or three people still say, bless you. <laughs> that, that there's still a connection between people that in some of some communities, as they get bigger and bigger, I won't name names, um, people start to get a guardedness or a, you know, yeah, have you ever been on a subway and like people won't look each other in the eye or walk, walk a downtown street and people almost don't want to let the other person enter their world because there's a fear of something. It was my interest in how could you create a community that has all of those things and keeps its fundamental character and sense of connection. And uh, it's been an interesting 14 years, 13 years since I started at it. <laughs>